the Endurance. We are stranded on an island in the Dragon's Triangle. We need help and medical supplies. Please respond. Hi guys, this is James from CVG and I am here with Matt. Hello Matt. Hello. And we are here to talk about Tomb Raider. Matt, you reviewed it uh, for CVG. Yes. Uh, gave it a very high score. Indeed. Um, so we should say, point out that that was just for the single player. You didn't get to play the multiplayer. No, no. Embargo issues uh, meant we couldn't get to hands on with the multiplayer stuff. So this is just for the single player thing. Let's get the, the first thing out of the way. The comparison to Uncharted, the inevitable comparison. <laughs> Um, justified? Um, well, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's kind of the same genre, but I mean, you could have said the same thing about Uncharted when that first came out. You know, the comparisons that they were Tomb Raider. So, Tomb Raider was the original kind of series to kind of do that. I guess, in terms of combat, um, Tomb Raider does something very interesting and new, which is that cover mechanic. It's kind of it, it's it's a hell of a lot smoother and a lot more kind of freeform. It, you you um you found yourself in Uncharted or the Uncharted series getting stuck to furniture or, or maybe attaching to the wrong bit of cover. Kind of took you out of the experience a little bit. In Tomb Raider, that, that doesn't happen. It's, uh, Lara kind of automatically crouches behind things, and there's a real sense of kind of uh, urgency to combat and frantic kind of action going on, which you don't necessarily get in the old Uncharted games. So there's definitely something here. Um, which Tomb Raider does take to the next level, if you like. Right, yeah. And, uh, well, we can see here, visually, it looks brilliant. Um, you mentioned in the review a lot of different varied environments and things. Definitely, and not just in terms of the visuals. I mean, obviously, you've got these incredible weather effects that are going on around you, but in terms of the puzzles you end up solving, these are, a lot of the time, these are based on the environment around you and the way that the weather is kind of influencing things. There's, there's um, puzzles which involve wind or involve... Um, uh, fire, things like this, the, the real kind of um, elemental kind of puzzles. So let's talk about the puzzles a little bit. Um, are we going to get to see some of the classic sort of tomb raiding, big open environments, and that, or is it very much a linear path? Um, well, yeah, the, the tomb raider walks this kind of uh, line between the kind of open world games that you you, you like your Assassin's Creed and, and, and yeah. Red Dead, where you've got this these kind of big open areas, but there is one path through that area, the one kind of critical path which you, you must go to uh, go along to uh, to advance. But the options are always there. You can stop and you can admire the scenery, you can go hunting, you can um, explore side tombs and things like that. Um, so yeah, there, there is this kind of openness to it, but there's also this uh, linearity which means you will get to see all of the best things going through. Uh, the critical path. Right, and there are like side tombs off that that you can go and, and find and discover along the way. Yeah, yeah. The main the main narrative tombs are huge, and and kind of often you don't really know that you're walking into one. You you end up discovering them almost by accident, kind of as you're as you're dragged along this storyline. But the side tombs are very much optional. You you might walk past one and not even know it was there. Um, although each area does have a kind of a checklist of of things to discover, so you know that there there will be a tomb somewhere. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the side teams, they're a little bit smaller, there's usually one, possibly two puzzles in each one. Um, and um, yeah, they're, they're, all of them are kind of uh, really atmospheric and very kind of physical kind of uh, puzzles to explore and, and, and try out. <laughs> and it's, it's based on a, a sort of hub world, and going through that the sort of hub world you get to get different upgrades along the way which you can then go back and revisit. Yeah, I mean it takes a lot of cues from things like Zelda or, or Metroid, so for example, Lara's getting the bow here, but later on you can um, you can gaffer tape a, a lighter to the front of the bow, right. and then you've got fire arrows. You can burn down obstacles, or or you could tie a, a rope to your to your arrow, and then you've got rope arrows, so you can make uh, bespoke bridges and things like that. So it really is as, um, the gear as you unlock it and as you progress, you get uh, opportunities to go back and re-explore previous areas. Not quite to the same extent as something like Metroid. You, you, once you've finished the game, um, you might find that you've already discovered everything that you can because right. you get the gear at certain points where it feels natural to explore those areas. Um, so it could have done a little bit more uh, with, the, with the gear, I guess, to, um, to kind of expand on that. Uh -huh. And we briefly saw Lara's survival instinct uh, in use there when the screen goes all sort of black and white. Is that a feature that, that had to be in the game? Um, I said in the review, it, arguably, um, it could do without it. I think it, it makes the puzzles a little bit too easy. It, essentially, it's the win button. It tells you where um, the answers to your puzzles right. are. Um, I find myself found, I found myself, when I was playing it, simply not using it until, <laughs> until <laughs> I was absolutely stumped. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it arguably could do without that. And the, in terms of sort of supporting characters, you've got the island and Lara, obviously, but the others are, are sort of not needed? I wouldn't say they're not needed. I, I would say that, um, okay, so for example, there's, there's cert there are certain characters, so certain crewmates of Lara's who are revealed through through documents and through relics that you find on the island to have very interesting and intricate kind of uh, pasts. Right. Th things have happened to these people which are interesting. But in the mainstay kind of gameplay, you, you might never know that because they, they are some of the dullest kind of... Um, <laughs> They're based on such kind of overused archetypes that you in, you instantly know them, but not in a kind of interesting way or, or kind of familiar way. It's almost like a, it's quite boring. You know, you've got like your angry angry Scotsman. You've got your your kind of your gentle giant. You, these, char these characters who you kind of know exactly how they're going to react. They've react got sort of like situation. generic traits. Something. Yeah, definitely. All right. So um, from everything that you've said then and you've played, I think we pretty much enjoy it. So summing up for, for fans of the Tomb Raider series or for newcomers, this is a pretty good addition to the series? Definitely. I think um, the combat is going to be um, a divisive point. Right. I think people are either going to love it or they're going to be kind of dismissive of, dismissive of it. But in terms of raiding tombs and solving puzzles, it's it's still in there and it's still um, fantastic. And like, like we were saying earlier, the world itself, Yamatai, the island, is an incredible playground to run around and explore.